Please, Master, think! It is for good reason that the Prodigious was abandoned in favor of the Miraculous. It was secured in that cave because it is too powerful, too dangerous! Precisely, Nuru. Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculous have been holding me in check for too long. I won't pass up an opportunity to destroy them with this higher power. What I started 15 years ago, I will finish tomorrow. At last. The Kwamis play a crucial role in the Miraculous Ladybug series, and without a doubt are the most substantial characters. They are godlike creatures, but they too are not flawless. Just like every other character in the series, they have weaknesses. In today's video, we will be looking at the weaknesses that these celestial beings have. Welcome to Bug Boss TV, and let's get started. <laughs> Number 10. Sensitivity One of the most intriguing aspects of the Kwamis is their sensitivity, both emotionally and physically. Kwamis can sense the miraculous holder's emotions and pains. These extreme feelings can affect their powers, as seen in the episode Reflect All. We see Dusu, the Kwami of the Peacock Miraculous, struggling with negative emotions, which affect her powers and well-being. The Kwamis offer their holders tremendous powers, including speed and stamina. This makes them a hard target when faced with villains. But there are times when speed and stamina aren't enough to stop them from sustaining injuries. The Kwamis are so sensitive that when their holders transform back after getting injured, the Kwami feels the pain of their holders as well. In the episode Oblivio, Ladybug and Cat Noir get hit by Oblivio, and alongside them, their miraculous can't remember who they were and how they transform back. This sensitive vulnerability can be a significant weakness for the Kwamis. Number 9. Limited Energy Source Another Kwami weakness is the limited use of their Miraculous. As stated in earlier seasons, the Miraculous Wilders can only use their special power once before they run out. In the episode Samboy, Noru the Kwami of the Butterfly Miraculous encounters difficulties when he can only grant one power at a time, making him vulnerable when faced with multiple enemies. Also in the earlier season, Tiki explains to Marinette that Kwamis can only transform their Miraculous Holder for a limited time before they need to rest and recharge. This limitation can leave Ladybug, Cat Noir, and other Miraculous Wilders vulnerable if they cannot finish a mission or solve a problem before their transformation runs out. These power sources and how long they last also depend on the individual. As stated in the series, Ladybug and Cat Noir are teenagers, and their reset time is shorter than that of Hawk Moth and Master Fu. Number 8. Rule Rules bind the Kwamis, and they must not reveal their identities or that of their welders. It even goes as far as a spell being cast on them, stopping them from saying the names of their holders. This spell protects the welder's identity. In the episode Destruction, Gabriel finds a way to bypass this spell cast on the Kwamis by the Guardians when he instructs the Kwamis to lead him to Ladybug. The Kwamis, who can't disobey a direct order, take Monarch to Marinette's room. Marinette, who's already prepared, convinces Monarch otherwise. Also, in the episode Ladybug, we see the consequences of breaking this rule. Number 7. They get sick Another strange weakness the Kwamis have is that they also get sick. Like humans, Kwamis are affected when exposed to cold, dampness, or polluted environments. Additionally, overexertion and exhaustion can also cause a Kwami to fall ill. As seen in the episode The Collector, Tiki becomes sick when trapped inside Hawk Moth's safe. The lack of fresh air and confinement weakens her. The sickness was so severe that she needed the help of Master Fu, the then guardian of the Miraculous Box. There are other instances in the series that show us how the Kwamis are also susceptible to sickness, just like humans, like in the episode Gigantitan. In this episode, Plog falls ill after transforming Adrian into Cat Noir multiple times in quick succession. This overuse of his powers exhausts Plog. When these creatures fall ill, getting them back on their feet is a challenge. The Kwamis can either be healed by the Guardian or by Ladybug, and when neither of these two is accessible, it becomes a challenge. Number 6. Revealing Their Actual Forms each Kwame has a much larger, more powerful true form that is usually hidden away. One of the most memorable examples of a Kwame's true form causing trouble is in the episode Sapotees. Tiki and Plog accidentally reveal their actual forms to the young twins, Ella and Etta. This creates a significant problem because it endangers the secret identities of Ladybug and Cat Noir. 
Another instance of the Kwame's true forms being a weakness is in the episode Gorzilla, when Plog's true form is captured on camera, it almost exposes Adrian as Cat Noir. This shows us how vulnerable the Kwamis become when they are exposed. For the Kwamis to migrate this weakness, they, along with their welders, have to go to great lengths to protect their Kwamis and their true forms. This adds a layer of complexity to their already challenging superhero lives. Number 5. Limited Senses the Kwame's senses are limited to their specific attributes. For instance, Tiki can only sense danger related to luck. The Kwamis are cut off from time when they are in the safety of the Miraculous Box. They are unaware of what's happening outside their environment, as seen in the episode Sandboy. The Kwamis are unaware that Ladybug needs their help, even when she's right beside the box, calling out for them. Number 4. Obsessions the Kwame's obsessions over certain things can be considered a weakness. These obsessions go as far as distracting them from their duties or even being captured. As seen in the episode The Collector, Tiki displays her obsession with cookies. When surrounded by sweets, she loses focus on her duty to guide Marinette. This obsession momentarily weakens her ability to provide guidance when needed most. Also in the episode Sapatees, Plog's obsession with cheese distracts him from assisting Adrian when he transforms into Cat Noir. This weakness puts Adrian at risk, highlighting how Kwame's obsessions can have serious consequences. Another revealing episode is Kwame Buster. In this episode, the akumatized villain Kwame Buster exploits the Kwame's obsessions. Kwame Buster captures Tiki and Plog by tempting them with their favorite things, cookies and cheese, which they can't resist. This weakness leads to their capture, putting their welders, Ladybug and Cat Noir, in dire situations. According to Plog, over 1,000 years ago, Tiki got out of control because she was obsessed with chocolate, causing her to use her powers to make chocolate mousse rain from the sky for several weeks, as she did with galettes made by Marinette's parents in the episode Dearest Family. Number 3. Susceptible to Akumatizations Kwamis are made of pure magical energy, making them incredibly susceptible to dark emotions. Instances in the series suggest that the Kwamis are not immune to being akumatized, except for the Kwami Noru. When a Kwami's object, Miracular, gets akumatized and destroyed, the Kwami reverts to their spirit form, unable to be seen by living beings anymore. Though Hawk Moth hasn't targeted the Kwamis for akumatizations, in Season 5, he uses the bee paralysis powers on Plog and Tiki. Also in Miraculous Shanghai, the Ringling creatures were akumatized. Though the series stated that they are different from Kwamis, this indicates that they, the Kwamis, can also be akumatized. Number 2. Damaged Miraculous Kwamis, despite their incredible powers, are not invulnerable. Their weakness lies in the condition of their Miraculous. When damaged, their abilities become compromised. In the episode Kwame Buster, we witness the impact of a damaged Miraculous firsthand. When Gabriel Agrest, also known as Hawk Moth, accumulates many Miraculouses, including Noru's, he plans to use their power to his advantage. But Noru's Miraculous has been damaged over time, making it weaker. A broken Miraculous has proven detrimental to the Wilder's health, as seen in Emily's case. Another example comes from the episode Feast, where a powerful and ancient senti monster Feast confronts Ladybug and Cat Noir. Feast is created from a Miraculous, but it is damaged over the centuries, making it unstable. Number 1. The Miraculous Itself Now, here's where it gets interesting. Kwame's weaknesses are closely related to the concept of the Miraculous. Beyond just the Miraculous objects or events, a common weakness emerges. Many Kwamis share a weakness tied to their pride. This pride can bind them to their vulnerabilities. In the episode The Pharaoh, Tiki's stubbornness stops her from transforming Marinette into Ladybug until Marinette solves a riddle despite their immediate danger. As seen in the episode Destruction, the Kwamis inform Gabriel that he shouldn't have insulted Oriko, the rooster Kwame, as he becomes non-compliant when his pride is being hurt. While Kwamis are incredibly powerful beings, they do have their vulnerabilities. However, it's precisely these challenges that make Miraculous Ladybug such an exciting and dynamic series. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the Kwamis world, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. As always, share your thoughts in the comments below. Chiki, you don't look well. I need you to take me to a doctor. But where am I going to find a doctor for Kwamis?